Hello and welcome back to All About Bridges. This is our second video in the series of Understanding Railway Steel Girders. In this video, we will cover I-section plate type railway girders. In the first part, we had covered open web railway girders, which can be accessed by clicking on the right top corner of your screen. Also, the link is being given in description. Now coming back to the current topic of plate girders. In plate girders, we will cover their general arrangement as per RDSO drawings, the details of their components, and how they transfer the loads. Let's begin the video. So within the plate girders, we will first cover the general arrangement. <clears throat> so this is what a plate girder looks like. Um, this is a solid web girder, basically. And track assembly is directly laid over the plate girders. So if we see its cross section, it is something like this. There are two plate girders interconnected with the help of bracings in the middle portion and diaphragm in the end portion. The steel bridge sleepers are provided directly above these girders over which the rail rests. It's like this. So let's explore plate girders in more detail. So this is what a plate girder looks like. So these are two I sections. This is one I section. This is one I section. And this is another I section. These two sections are at end connected by a diaphragm. And in the middle, they are connected with the help of these cross bracings over a regular interval. And again, at the end, we have a end diaphragm. The girder itself, if it is longer, then splices are provided as and where required. And along the length of the plate girder on the web, the stiffeners are provided. The stiffeners are also provided in the end diaphragm. So this is basically a very simple arrangement, easy to understand. Nothing more to explain much. So, uh, this was an introduction to the plate girder. So, let's explore this in more detail. So, this is the end diaphragm of plate girder. It is written that two numbers, and this is basically intermediate cross frames four numbers so we have just seen that there are two i sections interconnected at ends by a end diaphragm similarly here also we have two i sections interconnected in between with the help of intermediate cross frames at regular intervals and we can also see that this plate girder is having stiffeners this plate girders are having stiffeners so this is the basic arrangement of plate girders so this is the upper figure is the half section of elevation of girder so as you can see what <clears throat> this is the support where the girder is resting over the bearing this is the plate girder this is the cross section of the plate girder then we have these stiffeners at various places 
then we have a splicing arrangement shown when girder is uh, fabricated in parts so it has to be assembled at site with the help of splices so splicing is done so this is the basic arrangement of a plate girder and if we look at the top plan of the girder so if we look at the top plan of the girder it looks something like the figure shown below so this is the top plan in the top plan uh, we can see these 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 are basically top lateral bracings tlbs and meanwhile at regular intervals we can also see intermediate cross frames these are intermediate cross frames this is end diaphragm this is intermediate cross frame so we have here end diaphragm we have these tlvs top lateral bracings and then we have intermediate cross frames so this is the basic arrangement of top of the plate girders now let's see the bottom sectional plan of a plate girder so in the bottom to start with we can see it is connected by end diaphragm then we have bracings bottom lateral bracings we can call it blbs and then we have intermediate cross frame intermediate cross frames these are intermediate cross frames so this is about the bottom plan of the girder these are the two i sections so plate girders are comparatively simpler arrangements the splicing has also been shown in the figure this is the splicing so this was about understanding the general arrangement of plate girders now we will continue with the detailing of components to begin with the major component of uh, plate girder assembly are the plate girders themselves they are twin that is in pair we have already seen this is one plate girder this is one plate girder and at the end it is connected with the help of a end diaphragm and in the middle portion they are connected with cross frames next are the stiffeners so as we can see uh, various stiffeners at regular interval have been provided as mentioned in the drawing they are provided in the plate girder so this is for stiffening of the long web then we have top bracings so actually cross brace uh, top bracings um, uh, top lateral bracings rather top lateral bracings we have already seen in the through the drawing so these are the top lateral bracings so um, and the photograph on the right is of composite girder because studs have been provided at the top in plate girder uh, these uh, these studs shear studs are not provided so actually uh, we could not get any clear photograph of showing tlbs 
of a plate girder so just for showing the basic arrangement we are showing this photograph so top lateral bracings are given in the same manner in the plate girders also okay then we have bottom bracings so as we have seen that this is how bottom bracings are provided between two intermediate cross frames this is cross frame this is cross frame and uh, here again we could not find any suitable photograph for uh, showing uh, a railway plate girder so that's why we are taking an example of road bridge where we can see the bottom bracings so actually this is how bottom bracings are provided in the plate girder also so this is just a representative kind of photo now let's move on to cross bracings or we can say cross frames so this is how the cross frame is provided cross frame is made up of these two members are made up of angles these two are made up of angles and then these angles are welded you can see the welding going like this on the three sides of the angle like this so these are welded with the gusset plates so this is how cross frames are provided as you can see the gusset plate over here this is the gusset plate over here and the angles over here these are the angles then we have end diaphragm so this is end diaphragm shown in the drawing and this is how end diaphragm looks like actually so in the figure also we have uh, both sides jacking stiffeners provided so these are basically jacking stiffeners so the role of jacking stiffeners is that jacks are provided or rather jacks can be provided just below these so that during maintenance or other operations you can lift the girders for example if you want to uh, inspect the bearing condition of the bearing or you want to change the bearing or you want to do some repair work you have to lift the girder assembly after detaching the track over it so <clears throat> if we do not provide these stiffeners this web can buckle so to have a strong web we have provided jacking stiffeners over these end diaphragm so these are the jacking stiffeners so this was about detailing of the components now let's try to understand the load transfer how load is transferred from wheels to girders and to the substructures so plate girders are very simple very less components so understanding the load transfer is also simple so this is our plate girder over which these are the steel sleepers provided then we have these running rails and these are the guard rails so guard rails are normally non load bearing rails because only in exceptional cases like derailments etc loads come over the guard rails otherwise they are non load bearing rails 
so uh, first of all the train wheel comes over these running rails and uh, the load is transferred <coughs> from running rails to steel sleepers which is very sorry uh, the uh, load is transferred from wheels to the running rails then it is obvious that from here from this contact surface this contact surface the load is transferred to these sleepers so from running rails to steel sleepers then again these steel sleepers are resting over the plate girders so load is transferred from steel sleepers to plate girders then these plate girders are resting on some bearings so the load is transferred to the bearings and from bearings to this substructure so to this substructure so then from bearings to substructure and then from substructure to foundation and finally to the soil so this is how uh, uh, the load transfer sequence is there uh, where the loads from trains are transferred to the soil so this is quite simple because plate girders are very simple structures so i hope uh, this simple arrangement could have been uh, understood by the listeners if you want to understand the track structure over bridges covering channel sleepers and h beam sleepers you can watch our another video on the topic you can click on the right top corner of your screen so this was all about the current topic let us know in comments section the topic on which you want to watch a video. Subscribe for more such videos.